Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is the Apostate Prophet. I hope you're having a fantastic day, everybody. We are having a very special show today in which we want to talk about the demise of human dignity and how Islam can restore everything uh, to <laughs> perfect beauty and, and all of that. Uh, I am live with very special guests here to my side. As you can see, uh, David Wood, some of you might not know, but he's a he's a minor YouTuber who also has his own channel. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, on the other hand, we have here uh, Richard Spencer. Uh... <laughs> 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 just so, just so you know, Robert, he said yesterday he was going to do that, and I said that would be awesome. I couldn't go through with it, though. I had to you, you're a bigger, you're a bigger chicken than Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dello, man. <laughs> Robert Spencer, not Richard Spencer. <laughs> uh, Robert Spencer uh, is here, not not the other guy. We're, I, I guess, I'm glad about that. Uh, Robert, how are you doing? Richard couldn't make it. He asked me to fill in. <laughs> uh, so, what's up? How are you doing, Robert? Never better. Never better, AP. And thank you. I appreciate uh, you having me on. Always, you do great work, and uh, it's an honor, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. Same for you. Same for you. I appreciate that. And thanks for being here. And with that said, thanks everybody for tuning in. Have a good day. Uh, <clears throat> Oh, David, what's up? How are you doing? Uh, nothing, just sending out these links. What's up? What's up? What's up? You're still doing that? I thought you were done with that. What? <laughs> uh, when people hear that D Wood got something going down, they want to be notified. So I got to send it out on a couple different, uh, <sighs> couple different platforms here. This is what we're dealing with now. This is what we're dealing with. Terrible, terrible. Um, anyway, but uh, so today we want to talk about some very interesting things that recently happened. Um, so. I don't know where to start with this, but we were. I could start. I could start. You, you can start. Go ahead. You start. Oh yeah, I can. I can fill in the the back the background details. These are the background details from. Why is my head gianter than your guys? Hang on. I have the tech, <laughs> technology. It's just that way, David. Everyone's gonna call me Moosehead and stuff. Then I'm gonna freak out. Uh, ah, ha, ha, look at that. All right. So Robert, <clears throat> you can you can uh, correct me uh, wherever I'm wrong. Uh, this is my recollection of the events because you messaged me when. Uh, things started uh, last month, but here's my recollection. I, I don't even know. Is it is it public that you had horrible pneumonia? Or, or, or it is you, now. You were going to, oh, yeah. So, yeah, like, I've had pneumonia all summer and uh, was in the ER like, a couple times. It was very serious, but like, I'm still like here. Like bad, like bad, like David, can you finish a project I'm working on if I don't make it through this type deal? Yeah, it was very bad. So Robert- now. Yeah, Robert had a uh, pneumonia when he get gets invited on the Patrick uh, Bet David podcast, the PBD podcast, and you messaged me about this because you you said again, this is all my recollection, but I mean there, we have text messages and stuff if if, uh, if there's ever any confusion, but uh, to my uh, I recall you messaged me and said, hey, it's uh, against um, or or it's a it's a discussion with Muhammad Hijab, and I forget the guy's name, but you said a Jewish guy. And Adam uh, your impression was that you were going to be discussing the critical Quran. So people are going to be, you, you thought they're, they're like, they're going to be uh, like Muhammad Hijab is going to be criticizing the critical Quran and you're going to be responding. And you said, you're not really familiar with the, you don't have a lot of experience with the online Dawah guy. So how, uh, what do I think? How do I think Muhammad Hijab is going to respond? And I said, I think he'll respond like he did with Ayan Hirsi Ali. It's their standard method, which is instead of answering a person's objections, they typically try to discredit, the, look for something to discredit the person. Therefore, you don't have to listen to this person. Therefore, you don't have to respond to the objections. So I said, that's exactly what he did with Ayan Hirsi Ali. He found a, 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 a miscitation in her book in one of her books and said, and then just goes on to you see, this is why you should never listen to one of these Islamophones. They don't know anything. Ha ha. They got a reference wrong. And it's like, man, if you held that standard up to your guys, who's going to survive it? Your prophet and your God wouldn't even survive that. I mean, they had, they said all sorts of things that are like beyond ridiculously, absurdly false. 
Um, but I said that's I said I think they'll go through your go through your entire book, have a team of their their fans go through your book looking for anything that's a weak hadith or a miscitation and stuff, and and then go in there and say, You see, this is why you can't trust Robert Spencer and stuff. I said, uh, so I said I thought they'd go uh uh go that route. I mean, I thought Muhammad Hijab because it was just <clears throat> Up at that point, and and then a Jewish guy, and I had no idea what what he was going to bring up, and so, uh, yeah. The the only question is whether you're gonna whether you're gonna be healthy enough because you were still recovering, and the concern was, are you going to be you know are you going to be hacking and coughing in there because we skipped a bunch of episodes of this week in jihad uh, because you were sick, and then even when we did one, you were still having some some coughing problems and so on. So it was, it was a question of whether you're going to be you know healthy and so on. You're sick. You're sick. <laughs> <laughs> you see, <laughs> hey, hey, AP, you remember Ali Dawa praying for everyone, uh, telling everyone to pray that we get diseases. So, so you see, yeah. you see that <laughs> this is the proof. This is why Robert Spencer, you must convert to Islam now. Yeah. Uh, so that was all going on, and then at some point, I think it was towards the. It was definitely a couple weeks later, or something like that. But I think it was towards the end of August. Then you messaged me and you said wait a minute, now they just told me it's going to be Ali Dawa too. And you didn't know, you don't really know him either. You hear us making fun of him and you probably encountered, you know, some of his stuff here and Here's there. the one with the squeaky voice. Yeah, yeah, squeaky <laughs> voice. Sounds like a leprechaun. But um, uh, he was, so you, you're you like, oh no, now it, 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 it's, is this going to be two on one? Should I do this? I mean, I'm still sick. Should I, should I go in there two on one? And I said, I said, no, having Ali Dao in the mix actually makes it better and easier, not any more, any hard, <laughs> any harder, because he's going to say so much stupid stuff that it's going to be hilarious. Uh, so I said, no, that's actually, it's actually better that they've got the two of them in there because they act like clowns. And then uh, sometime a little after that, you messaged me and said, uh, uh, wait, they said that, that Rashid is going to be on too. And I was like, wait, you and Rashid, you and Rashid versus Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa, that's going to be awesome because like, the only real thing they could say to you is, ah, you don't know the Arabic, but Rashid would run circles around them in Arabic. So I was like, there's no, there's, they have no way, they have no way out. And so I'm thinking, oh, this is awesome. This is going to be cool. That's, that's my recollection of events right up until Muhammad Hijab posted his video. They're trying to ambush us, but we're not going to fall for this. They're trying to set us up and saying what we can't say. And you, what they were claiming, maybe we should uh, actually check out some of that video. Robert can share his thoughts on all this stuff, and then we can uh, maybe watch some of the video. But they're making it, they were blaming you, saying that you were somehow demanding that you only get to criticize Islam and they never get to say anything in response. And uh, I talked to you, and you're like, I never said any of that stuff. I thought we were talking about my book, and then it was going to be a roundtable discussion. I, I didn't lay down any rule. You had a completely different impression of the discussion from what they got. And yet they're blaming you for making all these rules. And then they rescued themselves from the ambush, which as soon as as soon as I saw, it was like, no, you realize that Robert Spencer and Rashid are going to criticize Muhammad and the Quran. And you're going to look for a way to avoid a situation where the Quran and Muhammad are going to be uh, mm -hmm. under investigation. That's what. And so my impression was that's why they were doing it. They knew that you and Rashid on a large platform that would have, that would be getting millions of views <clears throat> that Muhammad, uh, Muhammad and the Quran would be criticized. And in, they didn't want that. And so they, they had, but they have to say face. So they back out and say they were, you were trying to ambush them in total nonsense. Yeah. You know what I don't get, well, I can give a, the timeline. Um, I have the emails here from Patrick Bet David's producer. I don't want to, read his emails out but i'll give the general outline of what happened so wait, you're saying you're saying you do have the receipts if any <laughs> oh yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, i got the okay. emails right here if anybody says that's not the way it happened let them uh uh and so just to be clear the uh the, the producer is not going to come out tomorrow and say aha here's where robert spencer said i will only agree to appear on a on a podcast if i get to bless the quran and no one gets to respond to anything i believe no at no point did they ask me or did I offer any input whatsoever as to what the topic would be? We never discussed that. The only thing that what happened was on August 1st, he first wrote me. And like you said, I was very sick then. And he didn't say anything about anybody else. He just said, we'd like to have you on, said we could discuss the critical Quran. So that was all I knew. All right. And then the next day, I believe it was, yeah, August 2nd, he said it would be a roundtable discussion on Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. 
with Adam Sosnick Ju talking about Judaism, Muhammad Hijab talking about Islam, and presumably I was the Christian. And that was what I all I knew all month of August. And I said, okay. And that was that. And then August 29th, he wrote and said, it's going to be Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa and you. And so I wrote back and said, so you're saying it's the two of them and me and that's it? And then the next day he wrote and said, oh, we're also going to have Rashid. So I thought, great. Apparently mm -hmm. it's going to be Rashid and me and Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa. And he didn't mention the Jewish guy again, Adam Sosnick. So apparently it was going to be Muhammad Hijab and uh, Ali Dawa and me and Rashid talking about whatever. Islam, Christianity, who knows what. And then, so you understand now that for all the month of August, they and I, that, that is the Patrick Bet David show, and I, we both had the impression that Muhammad Hijab was fine with appearing with me. And then it was, when did this video come out? The ambush video. September, yeah, that was, this, that was like this month, September earlier 8th. this month. September 8th. So September 10 days 8th. So five weeks after the first invitation and the first notification I got that Muhammad Hijab was involved, suddenly Muhammad Hijab is saying that I'm manipulating the topic, which was completely false because I never had any input on the topic, and that he would not appear with me on moral grounds because I'm so evil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I found so weird about this is, you know, we, we were aware that this is uh, being planned. And um, to be honest, the whole time I thought to myself, this is almost too good to be true, that they are actually going to, you know, sit down on such a huge show with you and uh, with Brother Rashid and have an open discussion. And we're talking about Mohammed Tijab and Al Dawa, two very unhinged uh, individuals when it comes to Muslim apologetics. Almost too good to be true. But um, they publish a video in which they make it look like they were going to be ambushed and but they were too smart of course to be ambushed it, it, it just um by my first thought was okay why would they not uh try to clarify the situation and try to figure it out and you know get in touch with them again uh see where the communications went wrong uh instead of sitting down and directly making such a video in which they not only accuse you but also actually the host of the show of, of, of setting plot. up a plot against them. It, it looks like they didn't have any any um, any good faith to begin with in that. And yeah. it was just an opportunity for them to play the victim and, be, and, and act like we are smart. You would never yeah. fall for the games of the deceivers, the disbelievers. <laughs> yeah, and AP, I... Uh, Allah's the best I, of schemers. I had... I didn't. Well, I didn't think they were going to do this. That they were going to post this thing and say, "Ah ha! We're, we're, we'll never do this. We'll never. Ha ha! We didn't fall for this. I didn't think they were going to do that." But the entire time, Robert's saying, "You know, he's going to have this interaction." I'm thinking, "What? What stunt is he going to pull? They're going to pull some sort of stunt." Yeah. AP, have you have you ever had any sort of public interaction with these guys where they did not try to use deception? <laughs> Um, I don't know, Robert, if you have seen my video on uh, Muhammad Tijab, my very long yes. one. Yes, but, I did. Um, I at one point. Uh, agreed with Muhammad Hijab to have a debate. He he agreed to that with me, a debate which he initiated. You know, he challenged me. I came back to it. Uh, we agreed to having an online debate and so on. And eventually he made up some weird excuses and uh, and acted like I was at fault and then backed out of the debate. And Sounds uh, like this. I, I asked him, I said, why would you do this? We clearly agreed. And he said, well, okay, but we did not condition. We did not sign a contract. So uh, therefore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, and then when does he actually show up to confront you on someone else's live stream when you're yeah, having a discussion? Yeah. And then, so Robert, you, you're not familiar with this, but uh, AP gets, gets uh, invited on or invite himself on. Anyway, you end up on uh, Adam's, Saleh, Saleh, something like that. Uh, his pod, he has, he has a huge channel, uh, but the AP ends up on there with them. And then they're like, and we have a special guest, Muhammad Hijab. And they bring on there. So it was like, a, it was a setup, right? They're setting And I specifically up. asked him, so it's, it's just going to be you two guys. And they're like, yes, yes, yes. Come on. Uh, yeah, yeah. Talked about just that us, in the video. Just us. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 they, and I go there and suddenly it's uh, Muhammad Hijab appears. And yeah, so the same guy is... who, who backed out of an online debate with me, set up a plot yeah. to have a, to have an, an ambush, ambush discussion. Yes. Yeah. And yes. then, same and, and then, uh, and so that that's after, 
my debate with Muhammad Hijab, where they have all these rules and we both agree to all these rules that there won't be any personal attacks, any going oh. off, uh, veering from certain topics and so on. And we have, we're going to keep it friendly the entire time. We both agree. Then he goes down the list, breaks every agreement he he did. I stick to it. Uh, I, people think I'm, I'm dumb for sticking to it, but uh, uh, you know, I always, uh, I always deal with people afterwards if they uh, pull stunts like that. But um, notice it's this guy's portraying himself as, you know, strong and the hero. And he never feels confident enough to actually go into a discussion without some sort of imbalance of you're catching the other person off guard mm -hmm. or the other person has to pay, has to uh, uh, play by rules that you don't play play by. Um, and uh, or the other person isn't going to break a deal, but you will. It's always got to be something like that. And then you look at this, you look at this situation and it's, it's Muhammad Ajab and Ali Dawa and, uh, and you and brother Rashid. And, uh, I don't even know if we can trust their version of events as far as what was being said. And they're not allowed to criticize you know, and stuff because these I guys don't. are, these guys are compulsive liars. Uh, mm -hmm. but they, I mean, they may have the receipt too. I don't, I don't, we don't, we just don't know what was going on with the discussion with them. But the only point here is these guys never feel confident enough to actually go Here's, mm -hmm. here's, here's me representing my position. Here's you representing your position and let's have a fair exchange. They always have to do something deceptive and manipulative beforehand to try and get some sort of, uh, some sort of, uh, tactical advantage or something like that. And so I was, I was waiting for like, what are they going to do? Cause every, every time I hear about these guys, they always do something like that. So what are they going to do? And then I had no idea. They're just gonna, no, we're not going into any discussion with these, with these guys. We'll make an excuse for why we will never have a discussion with Robert Spencer. And instead, we want we want only people who aren't going to criticize Muhammad and the Quran. And that's the that's the deal that they wanted. And mm -hmm. that's the deal they apparently got. So totally they say. Guess. But what do you think that they never intended to come? That even though it was it appeared to be all set, that for five weeks it was Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa and me and Rashid, apparently, and they never intended to actually show up. They were always planning something. Can't tell because uh, I'm not just, sure if it's, liars. if it's helpful in this case. But uh, when I asked uh, Mohammed Hijab after the whole uh, you know fallout uh, regarding our debate agreement, when I asked him um, if you know if that was his plan all along, he I think he basically said that he would have never actually agreed to having a debate with me on uh, on the internet. So he, so he did agree to something. <laughs> while planning on backing out and making a scene at some point. He mm -hmm. basically admitted mm -hmm. that later on. And by the way, I mean, notice in the, in the video he posted with Eddie uh, from the Dean show, it's, uh, oh, I'm not going in there in a situation where it's a, uh, it's a Christian moderator and then the two Christians. So it's, it's lopsided. It's like, wait a minute, y you went on to the, to AP, you went on to the discussion and it's two Muslims <laughs> and Muhammad Hijab. That's different. You. I have an enemy uh, of Islam. It was, it was all it was all Muslims <clears throat> setting up my debate with hijab. And so and suddenly we get to he needs an excuse for backing out of a debate with Robert Spencer, because at the end of the day, guys, everyone watching, don't miss this as a central takeaway. They do not want Mah they do not want Muhammad and the Quran up for serious discussion with people who are able to. To expose their lies they're happy if you're just a random person you walk up and say hey i heard muhammad had sex with a nine-year-old girl they're fine having a discussion with you about that topic because you don't know their responses you don't know when they're lying and so on uh they do not want a person who can actually expose their lies uh especially especially on a podcast that's going to get millions of views they don't want to go anywhere near that and so they had to do something they did. They they did more than I thought they were. I didn't think they were going to cancel. I just thought they were going to demand some rules in their favor or something like that. But yeah, they just did so a whole maybe. meltdown. And let's get completely different opponents. Ones who uh, won't criticize Muhammad in the Quran. Interesting. <laughs> I haven't. I have a theory, which is that uh, that Muhammad Hijab um, took uh, when when the Quran says Allah is the best of deceivers. He took that as a challenge and thought I am an even better <laughs> deceiver. Greater. I'm <laughs> greater than Allah. So uh, now he's he's out here trying to do the best deception, pull the best deception. And, and this is what it actually did, right? Uh, he explains in the video that um, in that discussion that he published with the Dean Show. He explains that um, that that they're not going to have a discussion with you. They asked for different opponents who are not so offensive toward Islam because mm -hmm. being offensive is apparently the problem. And we are we are supposed to completely ignore the fact that these two people are extremely brutally offensive to 
to anyone who has who has ever watched these people. I mean, they, they, they can. I can, I can just bring a list out of all kinds of messed up stuff Mohammed Dijab ever said. But uh, prove uh, it. <laughs> I, I don't believe you, AP. Robert Robert is new here. Robert is new to this Mohammed Hijab. He has. You can't just say something and not prove it. How do we know that you're not the the best of deceivers? I have a lot of stuff to offer. I don't even know where to start. What do you want to buy? Like, uh, uh, <laughs> well, well, since they're criticism, give me the whole Mohammed Hijab. Uh, the whole Muhammad hijab uh, uh, presentation you've got. Uh, <laughs> how, how much is it? Wait, how much is it? It's too much, man. We never, we will never be able to cover everything Muhammad hijab has ever said and did when it comes to being a horrible individual. But um, yeah, so it already says here on the screen, Muhammad hijab wants to rape our wives. Uh, <laughs> Which and, and and that was that was based on uh that was based on Muhammad Hijab. Yeah, I believe certain so this is a tweet from him. I believe certain anti-Muslim women would wish they lived in the medieval period, a period where if a war was won by the opposing side, so he's talking about the Muslims being the opposing side, it was conventional that people could be taken as booty. Some historical accounts actually say some women would dress up for the captor. Now look at what he's saying here. Certain anti-Muslim women, women who are criticizing Islam. They wish they lived in the medieval period where if the war, talking about anti-Muslims, was being fought, so this would be a war against Muslims and the Muslims won, then the women would be taken as war booty. And he's saying these women would want to dress up so that they could be more attractive to the guys who are going to come in and take them as sex slaves. So look at what he's saying. Deep down, you... You women who criticize Islam, deep down you want to you want us to come in there and take you as our sex slaves. Lovely guy. Lovely. This is the guy who's trying to build bridges. Isn't that what he says in his video? Oh, yeah, Robert Spencer, he's an Islamophobe. Me and Ali Dawa, we're just here to build bridges, build bridges in the community. And we love, we love <laughs> they say they anyone who knows anything about him knows that's absolute nonsense. But he says that because that will appeal to someone like uh Patrick. Uh, bet David. Oh yeah, building bridges. That is a good idea. That's good that you guys want to do that. So far, podcast where the premise of it is to try and create bridges, and you bring people who, <laughs> frankly, are trying to break all bridges. I mean, these yeah, unlike Mohammed Hijab, look no at his face. Interest in collaborating <laughs> with, with Muslim people, uh, it was it was a bit kind of off key from that perspective. <laughs> but I think this is Mohammed Hijab saying that the whole. Um, issue of building bridges would completely fail if you brought on somebody like Robert Spencer because Robert Spencer is a is an he's Islamophobe and he's hateful he's he, he's he doesn't want to build bridges he wants to burn bridges and and uh th that guy here is this guy who by the way also made a tweet about my wife in which he said when these anti-muslim attention whore Islamophobes yeah, you got to read this you got to read this carefully because we need to get on their because knees. this this was a habit back then with, with Hijab and his followers. They would make a tweet that is all about rape and torture, but then they add a bunch of words so they can say, well, technically we're, you know, we, no, it's not, we it force them to their knees in submission. It's intellectual submission. We're just talking about argumentation. Whipped. They're going to whip them once they force, once we force them to their knees. Oh, whip them by freedom of speech. And they reluctantly open their mouth in protestation to find they've been defiled. Oh, by the truth. So it was this habit where we'll take I mean, all these horrible I mean, threats easier, of rape too. and torture. We'll take all I mean, these threats of rape and torture yeah. and just add some words to so that if the Twitter censors come along and say, what are you talking about? We're, we're, we're defiling them intellectually, not like, you know, raping them like we say they want to be. So if, if you read it like this, with all of that cut out, uh, it becomes quite quite clear. When these whore Islamophobes need to get on their knees in submission before they are whipped by Muslims and they reluctantly open their mouth in protestation to find that they have been defiled. He is here basically uh, yeah, imagining British. imagining uh, all, all of these brave Muslims coming and, uh, and building bridges with uh, Islamophobic people, building bridges with Islamophobic women. Uh, in, in such a in such a beautiful way, as you can see, he's all about building bridges. Bridges, building bridges. bridges. Ooh, building bridges. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, he's the same guy who said, um, who told me to commit suicide. So, yeah, here here is that. I would. Con uh, yeah, yeah, if I were, yeah, he said something like, "If I were an atheist, Do I like atheist." Tweet here. Uh, I'm sure the whole tweet somewhere. I can, I can bring it up quickly. 
Uh, yeah, he, he repeatedly encouraged you to commit suicide. Just find a tall building. and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And later he claimed he was it was just he was just doing that to test my my moral consistency because if I'm an atheist then I shouldn't find anything wrong with suicide so why would I be offended by that which is just which is the dumbest thing and the dumbest take on moral moral philosophy that I've ever heard in my life. AP just even... doesn't like my bridges. I'm building bridges. <laughs> building bridges so you can jump off them. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So he, if if I were an anxiety-ridden, hate-filled, nihilist atheist like Apos, I would consider suicide as a serious option. That is because the world offers such humans, in quotation uh, marks, in quotation marks, more pain than pleasure. The pain of being a coward, the pain of having no purpose, just finding a tall building. And who's running? Who's running right now? And then I, I, I want to give you sincere advice. I think you should commit suicide, not because you are a talentless coward or because you coward? are a waste of space. I think the world is offering you more pain than pleasure. It is not morally objectionable for you, so why not? This is the guy who wants to build bridges. Build bridges. Yeah, and shame on Robert Spencer for reporting on jihad all these years. That's why he's an Islamophobe you can't trust. Uh, we just want to build bridges on the PBD podcast and PDB con PBD podcast. After all, it's all joke, about man. it's all about salam, about sharing affection, love, and mercy. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Ali Daba's face there. This is the this is the guy who repeatedly tells, I mean, AP that when once he once he gets his Islamic state, AP is going to be executed. All ex Muslims, at least the ones who publicly proclaim their apostasy and try to spread it, no, are you're just, you're all just going to be up. are all going to be executed. Yeah, it I know. True. It's not like, uh, yeah, it's not a situation where we can prove it. Like, can't be true. Let's see. Let's see, example, Let's see if that's true. Let's see if that's true. Let's see if that's true. What is this? Like that, he's just believes in such things. Oh my God. Dawah and Muhammad Hijab and Imran, they believe that you should have capital punishment to apostates. And you just want Adam to be like, no, really? Well, Adam is taking the mick out of you. This is a part of our religion. There's a reason to it. Yeah, there's a reason why there's a capital punishment because people like you, little weaklings, who leave their religion and cause uh, corruption in the land by spreading it, the capital punishment in Islamic law would be applied to you. We have no doubt, and we're proud of that. Yeah, <laughs> capital punishment would be applied in an Islamic state. Yeah, not individuals going and doing it themselves like uh, idiots. Yeah, no, under an emir. It is done, yes. And we, you know what? We'll be watching. They'll be watching. We'll be, watching. They'll be in the crowd it's watching. There's corruption in the land that's going to cause more uh, damage to the society as a whole because the Sharia didn't come to protect an individual's right. Hey, can I drink alcohol? Yeah, sure. Drink alcohol, uh, run someone over, kill them, set the, uh, uh, all this kind of chaos. No, Islam <laughs> says the right of the community is greater than you individual wanting your right to freedom, which is BS. Absolutely BS. Yeah. Don't get me started. So, yeah. Yeah. so Patrick, Patrick bet David just said, uh, fell for these guys saying, oh, they want to build bridges. Let's have them yeah. on. Uh, but, but well, that's things. what they say. We don't yeah. know really what these things. That's true. That's true. Uh, but Robert, a, a couple, a couple of interesting things here. Um, aren't you, I mean, all the criticisms against you aren't, isn't one of the big criticisms against you, uh, saying that Islam has a death penalty for apostates and you must be making that up. Yeah, it's just it, the whole list, David, you know, uh, the death penalty for apostasy, child marriage, wife beating, all the things that are most noxious and unpleasant about Islam. And I've been called a liar for years for saying these things are part of Islam. And now the Dawa guys from nowadays are openly yeah. saying and we are proud of it yeah pro and by the way we we've got we've got uh i, I i've got a clip of ali dawa saying that if his daughter reached uh got her first period by the age of nine that uh he would tell her she's ready to be married as a nine-year-old we've got no, Hijab. that can't be true that can't got, be true yeah we've got muhammad hijab saying okay. that uh saying that if uh, uh if, if you just go with the quran you conclude that you can have sex with a five-year-old we can't prove any of that unfortunately but um but nah, that, can, that cannot be true that just I, I firstly i don't believe that wait a minute i don't believe that i will would never believe uh -oh. that 
Let's see. Oh, no. I keep saying things, and AP has all the evidence. You are ready to get married. If there's fluff on the muff, then she is old enough. <laughs> Ali G. Dawa. Uh, so let's, we'll, we'll get to that. So you are ready to get married if, at the age of nine. You're nine. And this is the guy who's going on the P PBD podcast to build bridges of, uh, of harmony and so on with everyone else. But no, th those are the kinds of clips and those are the kinds of issues that they know those kinds of issues would come up in, in a discussion with you and Rashid. And so they don't want you on there. They want people who aren't going to bring those up because they don't want millions of people that they're trying to just dupe into accepting their, their Dawa uh, script to find out what Islam really teaches on these issues. The other issue I wanted to bring up from the Ali Dawa, what he said right there is that if you're an apostate and you're announcing your apostasy, you're spreading corruption in the land. Uh, Robert, where, where are they getting the whole... Uh, corruption in the land from that this is a this would be a death penalty well david that's from chapter 5 verse 33 of the quran no which, uh, no. <laughs> which... <laughs> <laughs> which says that uh, those who spread corruption in the land uh should be killed or crucified or their hands and feet cut off on opposite sides that's and... in the quran and that's Chapter awesome because five, verse 33, that's right after the verse that they always massively misquote for 532. If anyone kills a man, it's as if he's killed all mankind. They always misrepresent that one. But it's interesting because we're told that 532 shows that you can't kill in the name of Islam. 533 commands it. And here you have Ali Dawa saying that he's going to use this passage to kill apostates. And historically, even in even in even in Muslim countries today, if they don't have something more specific to charge them with, Robert, won't they charge someone like a pastor or something like that? If they catch someone preaching, charge them with something like spreading corruption in the land? Oh, very much so. This is very common, especially in the Islamic Republic of Iran, where regularly protesters, people who are against the enforced hijab, people who are against the Islamic regime in some other way, that's what they're charged with, spreading corruption in the land. And it's a death penalty offense. Okay, are, are we sure that this is in the Quran, though? Uh, it, it says here this is in chapter 5, verse 33, but maybe somebody, I don't know, manipulated this or something. Yeah, I, I wrote that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that makes the critical Quran. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. Then I got oh. Sahih International. They, they fell for it. It was amazing. <laughs> Look at his um, spelling of utilitarian. Yeah, that's how he always <laughs> says it. Yeah. I, I learned that on AP's video. Utilitarian. Utilitarian. And, and you know, I, I wouldn't have a problem with, I don't want to nitpick. I wouldn't have a problem with somebody uh, mispronouncing that word. If but you did it, he would nitpick someone, it. Yeah, but it's it's someone who claims to be an expert in the field, in, in philosophy and moral philosophy, and who, who says to me that he could educate me, he could be my teacher and educate me on these things. And he doesn't know how utilitarianism is actually pronounced or spelled. And that's that's very, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to be petty, you know, but that's that's kind of weird, isn't it? Very, very weird. Um, what else is there? Uh, he wanted to confront the uh, listen to apostates who will confront you, slave masters, die in your rage. Somebody asked what slave masters. He said liberal white men. So, uh, so he wants to confront all the white men who are our slave masters. Uh, that's very interesting, but I'm sure I took it out of context. Um, they that's are from like the Quran, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. chapter eight, verse fifty-five. No. Yeah, look it up. And that's uh, that's yeah. one of the situations <laughs> oh. where he can put it like that. All of his Muslim fans will immediately know what he's saying. But an, an average person who doesn't know what's in the Quran, doesn't know how, how Muslims quote this, would not have an idea that he's actually mm -hmm. uh, attacking them. You, you'd be slaughtered like cattle. Wait, you said 855? 855. 855 says animals. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. The worst of um, the, the most ungrateful of people of of beings. Yeah, there you go. The worst of living creatures are those who disbelieved, and they are like uh, animals. Uh, the, the, Different the, the, translation. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, 
there is another uh, one which says uh indeed they are worse or they are they are they are less than than cattle um yeah i think that might be in chapter six david do you remember i'm not sure where that is i'll look it up right now it's in there numbers i don't remember numbers um he he was (laughs) justifying uh his behavior toward non-muslims saying why so harsh against the enemies using sexual references as precedent in the religion to anti-Muslim enemies. I take the advice. My application may have been unwise or miscalculated. All figures I have called publicly interrogated have public profiles. Uh, And then he cites these sources here. Abu Bakr did, according to this, um, the Arabs used to insult with uh, this expression, but with the wording mother, saying, go suck the clitoris of your mother. So Abu Bakr wanted to exaggerate in insulting Urwa by placing what Urwa uh, worshipped in the position of his mother. And he did so because of being angered by the statement that the Muslims would flee. Uh, is this the one? Oh, here. Okay, this is actually the, re- the relevant one, the one he goes to. In the words of Abu Bakr to Urwa, suck the clitoris of Allah is evidence that it is permissible to explicitly mention the name of the private parts if there is a benefit which is necessitated by that circumstance, according to the great scholar Ibn Taymiyyah. Uh, and, and actually, here is, uh, it's, it's Ibn Qayyim. So he thinks, because there's precedent in Islam of insulting <laughs> the disbelievers and their gods and mentioning uh, something like uh, lick the clitoris of Allah, it is therefore also permissible for him to get really nasty and perverted and talk about sex uh, and, and rape and things like that when he is addressing the enemies of Islam, like myself. He was talking about me in this case. And this is the one um, who wants to build bridges. He wants to build bridges. Yeah, notice notice that situation uh, with... Uh with Abu Bakr saying to a polytheist, uh, go suck the clitoris of a lot, saying go perform oral sex on your goddess. You know, that's uh, that's bridge building. And this is Muhammad Hijab defending his treatment of uh, unbelievers by pointing out this is how we uh, act towards them. By the way, guys, reference is uh, 7179 as far as that particular quote. So you have all kinds of things. Oh, yes, saying thank you. Saying we're the worst of creatures and we're the you know lowest of creatures and things like that. But uh, yeah, many are the jinns and men we have made for hell. They have hearts wherewith they understand not, eyes wherewith they see not, and ears wherewith they hear not. They are like cattle. There you go. Thank you. I look at this one. Um, this is the guy who wants to build bridges. Uh, he says to two ex-Muslims, just because they happen to be ex-Muslims who criticize him, he says to cringe apostate and AG, since it is not against your worldview, have you ever considered or indeed have you ever been requested to provide a male escort to, to provide services for your partners? <laughs> and he wants to build bridges. You know, mm-hmm. this guy. He, he's, a, he's doing a great job building bridges. But guys, notice, I mean, he, he, only has, he only has two speeds, nice and nasty, right? That's it. That's the only thing. If you're not doing what he wants... He will shower you with threats and abuse and insults and suggesting you, you commit suicide, calling you all kinds of names and so on. And when he do, when you do what he wants, he showers you with praise and so on. And it's all it's all with the it's all with the exact same goal, controlling people's behavior. Uh, if you're someone who's criticizing Islam, he's gonna he's gonna threaten and and uh, and uh, and heap abuse on you until you give up and shut your mouth. Uh, if you're going to help him do his dawah, then he'll he'll shower you with praises. But it's always it's always just controlling the situation and controlling the behavior of everyone around you. And sad part is, people fall for it. This guy has a very strange fascination with sexual deviance and perversion, yeah, golden which showers. he's always always projecting on everybody else. But you gotta wonder. I mean, you know, none of us here talk this way all the time. No. If it's this constantly on his mind, you got to wonder. Like like this, you mean? Like these strange comments. Let me read. You two can play with each other. Get on your knees for David Wood. Gimp, David Wood can give you a golden shower. Go ahead and give David Wood what he wants. Wink. Let David Wood give you a golden shower. <laughs> Gimp, get on your knees for your master. Boy, you can suck that. Golden shower it from your master. I know you need a slave master. Go shower. He, he pronounced he pronounced his typo. Your master. Let him slap your face. You fiend. <laughs> I, I have a sound for that too. Uh, this man has real problems. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but this, this is Muhammad Ajab building bridges. Uh, so anyway, Robert, this is this is what you had to look forward to because you would have gone in there, you would have schooled Hijab, and then he would have been sending you these kinds of messages uh, in his effort to build bridges afterwards. Golden challenge, you can get on your knees, Robert Spencer. Ha ha. <laughs> what's what's funny is I don't know Patrick, I don't know if Patrick does not have any sort of a vet vetting crew or something like that. Uh and, and to keep in mind, I'm not saying he shouldn't have Muhammad Hijab on. I really want him to have Muhammad Hijab. He should have Muhammad Hijab on every week to uh share his thoughts with the world because the more the bigger Ali Daw and Muhammad Hijab get, the more damage they're going to do to the Muslim community. Um but... well, you know, in the video with Eddie, Muhammad Hijab says that he talked to Patrick Bet David and that Patrick Bet David confessed that he didn't know anything about me, that they, you know, he's very busy. He goes from show to show and he has people who look into this sort of thing. And so he had no idea how evil I was. And I'm not saying that the, any of this is true. I'm just saying that that's what mm -hmm. Muhammad Hijab was saying. But if there is any truth to it, then Patrick Bet David likely does not know exactly what anything. he's dealing with with yeah. muhammad hijab and needs to be informed yeah, yeah he definitely needs to know more about this guy um yeah, i think if, if only if only to ask him about this how all of this relates to his uh build br bridge building work like hey how, how are you building bridges with this uh with this stuff Indeed. I, th I think i made some time stamps here for that for that video let me let me see um Let's see if that's... We don't agree to everything, and we don't disagree to everything. We, we bring ourselves a favorable result, which means that we need to be wise with these things. And I think having this emergency meeting with Patrick McDavid was the wise thing to do. And his response... The cowardly thing and deceptive and manipulative thing to do. I think he's a very pragmatic person, and you can't be that successful in business as he is. Notice how uh, in the video that they published before this, they were basically blasting Patrick but David for uh -huh. uh, setting up a plot against them. And then immediately, as soon as the problem is resolved, he's like, yeah, yep, you know, I, I, he's, works. A, he's a pragmatic guy. You know, like he, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> By the way, notice that is, that is the exact same principle always in Islam, right? Your wife gets out of Line, you beat her but then if she stops then we're good we're good <laughs> it's it's all it's always like we're gonna kill and slow oh no 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 you're okay no no you're doing what we want okay then we're good then we're good yeah yeah like i mean you know an empire of uh, uh, you, you always have to wonder like how stupid can people be falling for this but yeah if you're in a situation you just have no idea i mean think about this from from uh patrick uh bet david's you know perspective if he's having people like recommend who to get on here and stuff and you know robert spencer gets recommended and rashid gets recommended and muhammad ajab and ali dawa people suggest them hey well, let's get all these guys together on here and then these guys, ah, Robert Spencer is this horrible, evil person, uh, horrible. Whereas we're all about building bridges. He doesn't oh, know here. any better, so he's taking uh, their word for. It. Oh yeah, Robert. So Robert Spent. Wait, so Robert Spencer, evil, horrible guy, and you guys are the good guys who want to build bridges. Oh okay, let me go with that. And it's just like seriously, you don't want to, you don't want to look into this even slightly. Well, he is still having me on. As far as I know, That's we're good. still set. It's going to be Thursday with. Uh, uh, with Eddie here and Daniel Hakikachu. And so uh, that's going to be interesting. That, that's no, a no, revelation. No, no. Uh, that's I personally, I, I love Daniel Hakikachu. He's my favorite go-to uh, Muslim commentator if people want to uh, know more about Islam. So, uh, and, and I think that he is, like, contrary to Muhammad Hijab and Al-Dawa, at least he has the courage to actually go there and have uh, have an actual discussion. And yeah, argue Daniel's not, Daniel's not scared. Islam, right? Yeah. 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 So to his credit. Yeah, I mean, th yeah. think about this, guys. Um, Robert Spencer, Robert is, I mean, Robert's the OG of all this stuff. Uh, he was before he was before all of us uh, doing dealing with exposing jihad. Uh, Brother Rashid, he was before he was before uh, before me. I mean, when I started, I was hearing about Zachariah Boutros and Brother Rashid. They were the guys doing it in Arabic. And there were only a couple of people exposing Islam in English. So, uh, I mean, these guys had an awesome up. If they really want to expose Islamophobes, why wouldn't you want to go in there with Robert, Robert Spencer and Brother Rashid? Why wouldn't you want to like just go in there blasting away at them and expose all their lies and so on? Because you know what's going to happen. You know, millions of people are going to hear a bunch of stuff that you can't answer at all. And if you try to lie, it's not going to work because you got Robert Spencer and Brother Rashid there. 
And so what do you have to do? Oh, uh, oh no, they're trying to ambush us. Uh! <laughs> cowards, man. Total cowards. Let's see. I think uh, in this meeting now we can see like what the way you were presenting everything. And then he was also, he got into, he's very transparent. He was showing his emails, how he gets things, you know, the short amount of time, this, that, and the other. And you're really not knowing on one end who this person, on the other, these Islamophobes, career Islamophobes. And then you also, you know, now it's coming down to the the time that you got to, you, you need to know like what's going on so you can better prepare. So you can see. Why were they afraid to mention not? my name? They never mentioned my name in this video. Yeah, they, they do that. They, they do briefly mention brother Rashid's name. Uh, yes. And, and he does stuff in Arabic anyway, but they, they, uh, they abstain completely from mentioning your name here. They just they refer do it to it as as They, the they name one. me in the ambush video, but yeah. not in this one. And I was wondering what's up with that. I don't understand the, the tactic there. Allah is such a good schemer. I can't even figure out his scheme. <laughs> well, it's also it's also messed up because Eddie here, uh, Eddie here says that uh, says that the opponents that were scheduled, uh, they were the ones who inspired uh, Anders Breivik. Uh, total nonsense. I mean, but at least you're mentioned by Breivik. Uh, yeah, but they say, they say it's both of you, like both you guys are mentioned by Bravik. And, and Bravik doesn't mention you as any possible inspiration. According to the manifesto, I actually read it back. It's 1,500 pages. I didn't read every word because some of it's like weird, like daily schedules and, and recipes and stuff. It was all like, also, the dude's nuts. Um, but his his descriptions on how he was coming to his conclusions and so on. Uh, he was very, he was crystal clear on how he came to the conclusion. He said when he was young and growing up, uh, in 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 his area, he saw how he, he saw that the Muslims who had moved there were mistreating other people, and um, he didn't know what to do about it. And he said he eventually uh, read the Quran and the Hadith and found out that the, these things are taught by Islam. So he wanted to do something about it. He said he decided that he would go into politics to try and address things at a political level. But then he concluded that because politicians and the media shut down any sort of discussions or criticism of Islam, he said he regarded it as pointless and therefore the time for discussion is completely over. You have to do something to get the world's attention. And then he said he learned from Muslims. I, I, could, give, I could give you the quote, I could pull it up right here. He said he learned from Muslims that the way to get your message through the media blockade is deadly shock attacks. This is what will get the world's attention. And he decided all of that by 1999, which was, if I recall, the first, I mean, the first time I think most people heard about you, Robert, was like 2003 or something. So yeah. he already had, he, this was already in motion. He had already planned, everything had already happened. When you ask, why did you decide to do this? It's because of, uh, because of things that Muslims were doing, because of what's in the Quran and the Hadith, uh, and because of politicians and journalists. And because the people who taught me the way to get to, to the way to actually get my message across were terrorists. And therefore, I'm going to learn my lessons from everyone here and I'm going to go launch a terrorist attack. He concluded all of that before any of us had ever heard from you. But Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa and uh, and even um, even Eddie there from the Dean show are all blaming you. You're the way. Uh, uh, Anders Breivik sitting around minding his own business one day, and then he reads Robert Spencer's book and decides to go on a killing spree uh, against uh, against a bunch of what? What was it like? Teenagers? Like yeah, the youth camp. Teenagers on an island. Yeah, so he goes to the youth camp, and I'm going to go mass murder all these uh, all these people. At this youth non -Muslims, camp, non-Muslims, by the way. Yeah, and somehow they say you've got blood on your hands because of this, even though you couldn't, unless you have a time machine that we don't know about, Robert. You could not possibly, you could not have possibly been the inspiration. He says what gave him all the ideas. Again, it's it's Muslims, the Muslim sources, politicians, and journalists. That's everyone he blamed for why he came to his conclusion. Uh, nothing to do with you somehow, somehow it's your fault. Somehow you've got a time machine uh, powered by 1.21 gigawatts of Islamophobia. And you went back, inspired him to do all these things. That's their explanation. But then they they lump Rashid in there. Eddie lumps Rashid in there as, yeah, he, he's in the, he, he did it too. And they're blaming you for this. And then all the thousands of terrorist attacks that happened every year that where you've got jihadis citing why they're doing it. None of that is is blood on the hands of Muhammad. None of that is blood on the Quran. None of that is blood on any of this. None of this is blood on Ali Dawa uh, saying that people like AP have to be killed. None of that has anything to do with anything. But um, because so, Anders Breivik quoted you in his section on jihad, where he was just saying, this is what jihad teaches. 
And he quotes the Quran and the Hadith repeatedly and so on, but he also quotes you and a few others uh, just, to, just to say what jihad is. Uh, that's that's enough to the, marginalize uh, you forever. This this is the guy we were talking about. Some people are asking, who are you talking about? Because they didn't know the context. But uh, so Andres uh, Breivik is uh, a, a mass killer who in uh, 2011 in Norway killed uh, 77 people, uh, teenagers, non-Muslims. And, um, and, and he did some really messed up things. Like th th this guy doesn't align politically or morally, socially with Robert Spencer here at all. Um, all that did happen is that this guy was uh, inspired by Islamic terrorism. So he, he decided to commit an act of terrorism in order to send a message, which failed. And somewhere uh, al along the way, he did, somewhere along the way, he, he referenced uh, Robert Spencer, but also many other people. And he even cited Muhammad and Allah. And, and uh, But now they want to claim that because he cited Robert Spencer at some point, that Robert Spencer basically has blood on his hands and that he is responsible for this mass killing, which is complete nonsense. It is a far stretch, and it is much more likely that Allah and Muhammad are responsible for every single terrorist act committed by Islamic terrorists in the world because they keep citing Allah and Muhammad as their reasons directly which is not even true in the case of uh, this guy and Robert Spencer. And this is the kind of deception that Mohammed Hijab and Al-Adawa use. What he did was he took the uh, he took a documentary film that I was in in like 2002 or three, and he had the whole script, the whole transcript, which is also very suspicious because it was never published or even made. Oh. And so I don't know who made the transcript for him, but... It was it was the whole movie was in there. And so people say, oh, see, Spencer wasn't just quoted once. He's quoted 164 times by Andrews Brevik. It's because I that's every time I spoke in this movie. Gee, oh, my. Wow. Um, and wow. so the whole movie is in his manifesto. <laughs> and that's what the he's saying. Not only that, later on, he's saying we have to deal with even though he said very openly, as David explained, that he was inspired by the jihadis. He's saying we have to do something about Islam in Europe, and that's why people blame me. But he actually criticizes me explicitly for not being violent. And then people turn around and say, you see, that means Spencer had inspired him to kill people. Well, actually, he explicitly ruled that out. And if quoting me makes me evil, then like you say, then all these jihadis quoting the Quran make the Quran evil. And... There's all sorts of other examples. Uh, Osama bin Laden quotes Noam Chomsky. He loves Noam Chomsky. Nobody ever goes to Noam Chomsky and says, you have blood on your hands because <laughs> Osama bin Laden quoted you. Uh, uh, there was a shooter in Dayton, Ohio, a few years back, and he had left a manifesto quoting Elizabeth Warren, the senator from Massachusetts. Nobody ever says, oh, Elizabeth Warren has blood on her hands. It's just a, a, a means to discredit me. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, it's interesting to note that neither Muhammad Hijab nor anybody else can ever come up with anything that I say about Islam that is actually false. They can't say, oh, see, he tells falsehoods about Islam. So they have to fall back on this brevet thing, which is completely fabricated. By he, he also cited uh, he also cited John Stuart Mill, by the way. So that means mm -hmm. John Stuart Mill has blood on his hands. And John Locke, yes. by the way, he also has blood on his hands. And Obama. He Obama, Obama also has, yeah. yeah. Somebody pointed out uh, Mark McGandhi is mentioned, so he also Gandhi also has mm -hmm. blood in his hands. Yeah, um, yeah uh, on, uh, I remember. I remember right after the attack, his uh, his Facebook page was still up, and I went to his Facebook page, and it was all this stuff about uh, he was he was emphasizing that we need to be pragmatic, and and so what he was saying is all the people who came before him who criticize Islam, they're not willing to go on a killing spree, and we have to be pragmatic about this. But then he had all these uh. Uh, links to pragmatism by William James, and <laughs> it's funny. Pragmatism, it, it, pragmatism is an American mm -hmm. philosophical. It's 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 the you've got analytic philosophy, uh, and then you have a continental philosophy, which is garbage, and then American mm -hmm. philosophy, which uh, uh, I mean, you have a bunch of American philosophy, but uh, uh, the movement there was pragmatism, and that's William James and Josiah Royce and uh, uh, Pierce and so on. And uh, but what's funny is that has no <laughs> has nothing to do with being pragmatic, like he was talking about. He didn't, under he didn't understand what he was uh, what he was citing. 
but um, yeah, he, he's a guy who likes to jumble a bunch of things together as support. And uh, at the end of the day, he said exactly what led him to his attacks and everything was in motion from 1999. And from that point on, the rest of the time, the next 12 years was all spent in preparation for what he decided he was going to do in 1999. Uh, once more, um, uh, unless Robert has a time machine that we're not aware of, couldn't have had any uh, anything to do with that attack. And uh, the other thing, notice what Robert Robert just pointed. I, I, I said it earlier. Why are they trying to pin that on you? Their goal is not to answer you. The goal is not to respond mm -hmm. to you. The goal is not to show that you've gotten something wrong. The goal is to discredit and marginalize you mm -hmm. so that they never have to deal with that. And anyone who criticizes Islam, they want to do the exact same thing. That's an Islamophobe. We're trying to build bridges here, man. Get the Islamophobes out of here and only have people on who are either just going to agree with us or who don't know anything about the Quran and the Hadith. Uh, and then we'll interact with them so we can work on our bridges, which for them means we'll be attacking you the entire time and you sit back and take it. And no one knows about the problems with Muhammad and the Quran. Well, you know, Said Qutb said, the, the great Muslim Brotherhood theorist and Islamic scholar uh, of the 20th century, he said that, uh, yes, we should build bridges. There you go. It's probably in the milestones that we should build bridges with the infidels. And we have to understand that that is a one way bridge. This is not a give and take. This is a means of dawah. Yeah. But anyway, why was Muhammad Hijab fine with talking to me for five weeks and then suddenly I have blood on my hands and he won't appear with me? What happened? I I, I don't know. There's, no, he, he, there's nothing he probably, public about that. He will, he will agree to go on any big show. He's a narcissist. That's their goal. In fact, uh, since you haven't been, uh, you haven't been dealing with the dawah guys, Robert, um, their new goal, since all their arguments have come crumbling down, right? That for they lied about perfect preservation mm -hmm. of the Quran for a while, then that got exposed, fortunately, by Muhammad Hijab and uh, Yasser Qadi, uh, the holes in the narrative interview, and then the scientific miracles. Oh, there's scientific miracles in the Quran that got exposed, uh, and now even Ali Dawa has admitted that it was all a lie. But, um, interestingly, Ali Dawa in that same video said that what's going to draw people to Islam is our intolerance. He goes, what is going to draw them is our intolerance, right? <laughs> that since they don't have any evidence anymore, it's their intolerance that's going to draw them. Well, isn't but that what drew Andrew Tate? What's that? Isn't that what drew Andrew Tate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that, they'll, yeah, that's they'll their, kill that's, you if you insult them. I respect yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's their whole plan. That's going to be their new draw because they, they realize all their arguments have failed. So, but their new entire Dawa plan for like the last two years has been uh, since everyone who's actually dealt with these arguments in the past knows that they're completely bogus and knows how stupid they are. We have to present Islam to a new audience, new audiences that don't know anything about Islam. And so their goal has been to get on these, you know, the Jordan Peterson and Michaela Peterson, and they've been trying to get on Joe Rogan for a while, by the way, that's why they were praising him in this video. Oh, Joe Rogan. He's so great. Oh yes. He's so wonderful. Joe they're, Rogan. Trying, they're trying to get on there. Uh, PBD podcast. They want to be on all these podcasts specifically because they want they want people who have no idea what Islam teaches that you can lie to, but they don't want anyone on the other side who's going to be able to expose their lies. And Joe so they want to rig it. So they want to rig it. So they go on huge podcasts and can lie about Islam all day. No one can correct them. And that's their entire approach. And so they don't want anyone else. And so, yeah, they have to discredit you. And that's that's just their methodology. And it's just uh, it's I mean, they keep doing it. And you think, how can anyone fall for this? But that's that's you know it's evil but that is the that is the smart part about the strategy is they know there are people with big podcasts who don't know anything about islam and if you go in there i'm just trying to build bridges here we, we it, the, but the islamophobes are the problem if we can get the islamophobes off here and i can just do my dawah my dawah spiel on your podcast then we can you know we can really get along and, and build bridges and they know people are like, oh that's a good idea and so people fall for it and they don't realize they're dealing with compulsive liars narcissists and professional manipulators. And uh, again, I, I love it. I love it. Cause they, they don't realize what the, what the actual outcome of all this, they're going to, they're going to lie a bunch. Yes. They will get some people who go, Oh, that's what Islam teaches. Let me convert. Oh, I never knew about a, this big, a, a portion of those people are going to find out later on that this has all been a lie, like with the scientific miracles and all this stuff. And so they're actually creating the next generation of ex Muslims. And some of those ex-Muslims are going to be ticked off that they got lied to. And so, uh, you know, I'm getting old. Robert, 
you're getting old. AP, you will eventually be getting old. I was just born. We're going to have the next generation of ex-Muslims coming in to, uh, <laughs> to, school, to school the next generation of, of Dawah liars. Hey, uh, how about this? Um, uh, Salman Rushdie was recently, was it last year? Last year he was attacked, right? By, he, was, he was stabbed on stage by some, um, by a very uh, passionate Muslim uh, believer. And of course, Mohammed Hijab is somebody who wants to build bridges and appeal to the, to the values of Western people all around. He would, he would, of course, completely condemn and absolutely reject such violence against, uh, against an author. So uh, I quickly want to look at what he said in response to um, it, the attacks on Salman Rushdie. His videos, a very, very good point, which is that he said, Why do you specialize Islam in this discussion when, if the sacred symbols of other peoples from other faiths, as we've seen with the Hindutva in India, he makes the example of Ataturk in Turkey, some Kurdish leader he mentions, we can go on and on. If you try and desecrate the sacred symbols of individuals, they will, the gangster communities among them will deal with you, my friends. Mm -hmm. We're not condoning such a thing at all, but that is a reality. We, the Muslims, at 1.8 billion, which represent, according to Pew, will represent a third of the population of the world. One in three, at least one in four now. You don't think we have gangsters? We have gang Muslim gangsters as well. And when you go ahead and attack the sacred symbols of Islam, although our approach is not to do so, we can't stop the gangsters from dealing with you or anyone else. We can't stop the Muslim gangsters from dealing with you or anyone else. Just like if you go to Colombia and you speak about particular cartel in a specific manner, go to their area and be a man and speak about that. Is he comparing Islam to a drug cartel? <laughs> yes. What an Islamophobe. Precisely, that's what he's doing. So what he's basically saying is, yeah, no, no, we will not do anything. You know, we will not say that should be done, but we have gangsters. And those gangsters, they will, they will, they will come to you, and they will punish you. This is a very common, very, very simple, very blatant way of basically saying, you know, I, I'm not doing anything wrong. You know, don't implicate yeah. me. But there are lots of people out there who are from us who will punish you. And it's of course, the same. this is like what, what's this called? Is it dog whistle? Is that what he's always doing? Yeah, it's the same thing he does with his tweets, where he'll be saying something that's very clear, but he'll add some words so that, hey, I'm not doing anything here. I'm just talking about enforcing them to their knees in intellectual submission and finding, yeah. you know, finding that they've been defiled by the truth. It's him adding a bunch of words in there. But yes, this is very clearly. Oh yeah, I don't. I'm not going to go around slaughtering people for criticizing uh, Muhammad or writing a book back in the 1980s. I'm not going to do that. But uh, for the rest of you, I can't control all my fans who are going to go on a killing spree if you do these things. So yeah, just you know, be aware you're going to die and you're going to be brutally murdered by my fans. Yeah. So maybe Patrick, but David and his team, uh, whoever is in charge, maybe they should look at this and they should, uh, they should. I don't know, maybe discuss this. They should discuss whether a guy who publishes a video in which he basically issues uh, the, these these subtle approvals of uh, of hunting down and punishing the enemies of Islam who disrespect Islam, of, 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 they should maybe discuss whether this guy is a good candidate to build the bridges with. He's <laughs> going to be building Indeed. some bridges. Yeah. The bridges might have uh, explosives attached. Yeah. Even better, yeah. like special bridges. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Um, yeah, and just coming together because these people that were lined up. I mean, these are these are career Islamophobes. Absolutely. These are people w with blood on their hands. These are people yeah, who hang now on to, you had, just uh, to clarify. Uh, it, it, so it's Robert Spencer and Brother Rashid. Brother Rashid is an ex-Muslim from Morocco. His dad was an imam. He converted to Christianity, and he he preaches the gospel and criticizes Islam in Arabic. These guys are saying blood on the blood on his hands, blood on his hands. Hey, Robert, it might be a good uh, might be a good point of discussion since Eddie's going to be there to ask him what blood Rashid has on his hands uh, and why the Muhammad and the Quran have none on theirs. 
Look, look, how, look, Robert, how David is throwing you under the bus here. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah Ro <laughs> Robert does have blood in his hands, but leave Brother Rashid out of this. <laughs> oh, 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 hey, 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 Robert, you might, I mean, you know, I, I mean, Eddie's probably going to, Eddie's probably going to watch this, but Robert, you know, if, if, if it comes up on uh, you and Bravik and stuff like that, because he's saying, I mean, this guy has oh, publicly, Eddie's certainly going to mention yeah, that. There's yeah, 100%. And, yeah, so uh, you can actually you can actually bring the the quotes from Anders Breivik when he talks about why he decided that violence is the only way. I'll get got the quotation right here, Eddie. And keep I don't actually have anything about, against Eddie. I don't know enough about him to to have a negative view of him. Other, the other Dawa guys, I like I've seen enough like pure evil from them uh, to know what I'm dealing with. Eddie, I, I have no feelings one way or another towards towards Eddie. Same. Seems like a seems like a nice guy. But uh, here's the quote from. Breivik's manifesto on why he decided violence is the only way. Unfortunately, spectacular operations like these are the only way to be heard. Everything else we have tried has failed and yielded nothing. The Muslims showed us that deadly shock attacks are the only tool we have at the moment, which will guarantee that our voice is heard. So he's saying he got the idea for the deadly shock attacks from Robert Snow from Muslims. Oopsie. Yes, indeed. I guess the terrorists have blood on their hands beyond the people they murdered. They actually incited uh, Anders Breivik to go kill a bunch of uh, teenagers at a youth camp. So in the end, by their logic, it is again uh, Allah who has blood on his hands due to the mass murder committed by Anders Breivik. Fantastic. How, how are you going to get out of that situation? We will never know. You know the Andrew Brevik was it? Anders, and Anders he's mentioned Brevik, in his yeah. Anders Brevik mm -hmm. in his manifesto was mentioned these people. So this was very sensitive. <laughs> these also, people, you, these people, got to ask them where where Rashid's mentioned. Yeah, yeah, in in special team and you know, with people like this, but um, it was nice to see how he had presented things. You could see you know, where he was coming from, you, and then how everything just at the end it came out to a positive ending. What were your thoughts about that? Absolutely, and I think I mean the way he presented it was that he had no idea. Um, who these people were, and I have reason, good reason to believe that, especially the second person who's Rashid Hamimi, he wouldn't know who he was because he, he's most of his content is in the Arabic language. So that, unless you have access to that, I, fair play, you won't know who he is. But these people have had strong anti-Islamic sentiments, and they, you know, they attacked the Prophet of Islam. Not just that, not the, not just the fact that they attacked the Prophet of Islam and Muslim people, but they, they effectively try and make life harder for Muslim people in the West. I mean, how, some of the organizations and what they're doing. How, how do I do that? Uh, by by telling people what jihadis are doing. If you report, notice notice the reasoning. Notice the reasoning because this is what's creepy. The, their goal, the goal of people like Mohammed Hijab is always to silence. Now think about this. If Islam were really peaceful and so on, shouldn't they be glad that you're exposing the jihadis and 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 showing what the jihadis are doing so that they, you know, the, these guys can be exposed and marginalized and so on? Instead, it's oh, Robert is one of the only people who reports regularly on jihad, and therefore. Uh, we have to we have to silence him, and we have to call him an Islamophobe and make sure that that uh, that we don't sit down and actually have a discussion with him. But I mean, yeah, it, this it's it's pure cowardice. It's mm -hmm. pure absolute cowardice. Ali Dawa has called for more violence than I've ever seen Robert call uh, call this, for. This is so ridiculous. He says uh, he says Robert Spencer is somebody who is trying to make life harder for for Muslims while. He's coming with his best friend who basically says here uh, what kind of that people like you, little weaklings who leave their religion and cause uh, corruption in the land by spreading it. The capital punishment in Islamic law would be applied to you. We have no doubt. And we're proud of that. So <laughs> and, and by the way, and, and AP notice it's, wow, it's not it's not just it's not just go after you and threaten you and tell you that if they get their way, you're going to be executed. It's not just harassing you saying that you're you're going to be uh, uh, that you should commit suicide. It's not just uh, golden showers, golden showers, blah, blah, blah. It's not just that. It's 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 not just going after your wife. You know what I mean? It, it's the, how, how is this not how is this not trying to make your life harder, trying to make life harder? for uh for ex-muslims no they just want to they want to make it easier for me they want to you know, th yeah, they, they know that life would be harder for me in an islamic state so they want to relieve me of that hardship uh you know by executing me and other ex-muslims like me there's actually uh it's actually mercy on their part absolutely cowards, merciful. Man. total merciful. cowards had a actually, chance had a chance to expose 
Robert Spencer. Since we are speaking and of they, making and life they, harder. And they ran, people. and they totally ran. Muhammad Hijab, if you're watching this, you're a total coward. You are a total coward. You are a coward. You are a coward. In fact, no, as well as a liar. Already. Look at me. Look at me. You know you're done. <laughs> okay. Look at me, boy. You're a coward. <laughs> Let me play this. One non-allegiance to a state, um, and you believe, and you believe that the state should be Islamic, and everybody should be forced to pledge allegiance to the state, don't you? No, I don't think that is any. Look, if it's a Muslim majority country, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, if it's a Muslim so, majority, so, so what is the difference then? No, 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 you believe that an Islamic state should be established. I think if it's a Muslim majority country, if they want Islam, then surely on democratic principles, uh, outsiders should have no, nothing. Democratic. You believe in Islam, that an Islamic uh, state, an Islamic government, should be established if the majority is uh, is Muslim. You, for Absolutely. example, what, you, for example, want to spread Islam to the entire UK. So, if the no, majority of the look, entire no, UK, can, if the majority honest, of the entire UK right, was was right. Muslim, no, you no, would no, want I, everybody I to I don't believe to an Islamic state, and this look, Islamic state should require. I don't want an Islamic state in Britain. Britain. I'm not asking. Woo! That doesn't make any sense. He wants to spread Islam, at which he's not really doing a good job. And he would love to see people convert to Islam in masses. And he also believes that a majority Muslim country should establish an Islamic state. And he is a Muslim proselytizer in England, which concludes that the UK would also be an Islamic state or Britain or England, whatever you call it. And that Islamic state would require its Muslim population and the rest of its population to be loyal to this Islamic state. And you believe that the state should be Islamic and everybody should be forced to pledge allegiance to the state, don't you? No, I don't think that is any... Look, if it's a Muslim majority, a country absolutely and this guy is talking about how robert spencer wants to make life harder for muslims in the west <laughs> this there is just go. ridiculous man yes anyway <clears throat> anything else you want to cover i don't David? know man it's uh it's pretty straightforward i'm looking forward to i mean you know a lot of you know a lot of people have their objections to daniel and their uh their i haven't watched it yet but i heard he completely misrepresented uh inspiring philosophy and so on uh, so oh, there's yeah. that but uh i mean it, at least he's not a total coward running from an, from an agreement you know what i mean yeah yeah what do you do with that and what you know you know what's interesting if the situation had been completely reversed and it was going to be Robert Spencer and uh, Brother Rashid versus Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa. And then Brother Rashid and and Robert had somehow said, oh, you know, since the you know, since uh, Ali Dawa calls for the death of, of apostates and Rashid is an apostate. And since Muhammad Hijab says all these things and tells people to commit suicide and so on, we don't want any part of this. They would have been making videos about what a coward you what cowards you are for running and so on. They would have been they would have been matter of fact, you're wondering what he was doing for that entire like five weeks where everything is yeah. on. He's probably waiting for you guys to come up with some reason to back out so he can say you ran like cowards. <laughs> And then when you didn't run, you guys were totally on. Uh, yeah, then he had to run like a coward. But he has to thump his chest. Aha, it's because we're so smart and we didn't fall for the ambush, which had absolutely nothing to do with Robert because, oh, wow. What a what a joke, man. This doll was a joke, man. They wonder why they wonder why they're <laughs> dealing with the avalanche of apostasy. And these are their, uh, you know, Mohammed Ajab and Ali Dawar, their poster boys. And you know what they do to uh, to make people like their religion again? They say they are not doing it, but then they are doing it uh, here mm -hmm. in this video at around uh, 29, 30 or something. They start talking about how Muslims are the one who actually love Jesus. And uh, they love Jesus. They, they respect Jesus. They recognize Jesus. And they excommunicate all those who do not acknowledge Jesus and stuff like that, completely trying to... Uh, appeal to uh you know ignorant western people in this very deceptive slimy way and this yeah this is all this is all meant for because anyone who knows muhammad hijab is not fault is not is not buying any of this they know it's complete nonsense muhammad hijab is the is the big bridge builder this is made for <laughs> uh patrick bet david's uh yeah. fans and producers and so on to watch this and go oh well yeah these are the nice guys who are just trying to build bridges out there and we love, oh, they love Jesus. Oh, wow, wow. Wouldn't that be great to have a great, friendly, religious discussion with these guys? Let's get a couple of people on here who love discussion and who love bridges and who would never criticize Muhammad or the Quran. 
so we can build bridges. My goodness, man. Disgusting. Cowards. Absolute cowards. Absolute cowards. By the way, I made a long video, um, a video that I'm personally proud of. I say that very rarely. You're proud of that. Uh, <laughs> I'm proud of that. I, I need to add that sound to my soundboard. I didn't do that yet. That should uh, be that should be no, button number one, man. Come on. I know. I know. I, I wasn't. I, this is I amateur the, hour? I didn't have the time yet. But I made a video uh, titled um, How Islam Got Jesus Completely Wrong, uh, which is 10, 13 minutes in which I explain how Islam entirely misrepresents and misunderstands Jesus and how Muslims completely misunderstand uh, Jesus, how they don't really know what Jesus is about in Christianity and how uh, the Quran gets gets the history of Jesus completely wrong. Uh, I would recommend. Wait, I, wait, I just that. had a debate on that. I just had a debate on whether Jesus was a Muslim. Um, oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. Kenny well, Bomer, Kenny, my, my uh, Dawah opponent, the only thing he could really argue is that in the technical sense of the word Muslim as one who submits, since Jesus submitted himself as the son to the father, he's <laughs> technically technically fits the definition. <laughs> so, but if, if Abraham was a Muslim in the Quran, that's chapter three, verse 67, kids, then Jesus must have been also. Of course. Especially Everybody since in 61, six, he uh, says Muhammad is coming. Mm -hmm. Got to be. Yep. Airtight case. Yeah. Well, um, Alexander the Great was a was a Muslim also. Yep. So. Oh yeah. yeah, powerful. He was great. He was great. There you go. Oh, you had up by the way somebody asking my uh, my YouTube channel. Which oh yes, is, yes, I wanted to. There's say not that. a whole lot there, but it's Jihad Watch video <coughs> most every Wednesday night. Although not lately, but we're going to keep doing it. Uh, the this week in Jihad with David Wood and me, and one day I'm going to start doing some other videos too. But right now I'm writing a critical biography of Muhammad and man. It's going to blow some minds. I'm going through the texts, the Islamic texts, uh, al waqidi Ibn Sa'ad, uh, Ibn Hisham, Ibn, Ibn Ishaq, that is, and uh, Bukhari and uh, all the other uh, Hadith, the Sira material in the Hadith, and showing all the contradictions and how uh, there's so many things that are controverted in the story. So watch for that next year. But anyway, I'm hoping to make more videos one of these days, but in the meantime, you can catch David and me most Wednesdays this week in Jihad. Inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. Inshallah. Uh, <laughs> inshallah. <laughs> uh, you can watch out for that. That's fantastic. Uh, I would I would link I will link it in the description as well. Uh, link Thank to you, your sir. channel so that people uh, go to you. I, I usually uh, charge five hundred dollars for each link. Uh, that I'll I write a check. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Um, that would be very, very bad. Royal Castrillo said, Albanian ex-Muslim here, this world needs more Robert Spencers. But he didn't spell your name right, so he probably talks, he's probably talking about somebody else. I don't know. Yeah, Richard. <laughs> uh, that clearly said Robet. Robet Spencer. Robet, Robet, Robet yeah. Spencer. Robet, yeah. It's the Robet. French version. Uh, control yourself said Muhammad Hijab and Al Dawah are obviously trolling Muslims. I mean, how many times has Mimi totally exposed Islam? Now, Lily is also exposing Islam's scientific miracles while pretending to be Muslim. Yeah, that's I mean, that's why I said, and uh, AP, you were there. How many times did I say these guys are going to lead to nothing but disaster for the Muslim community? And uh, and then I mean, they they single, I mean, you say single handedly, but they're a duo, but they uh, dual handedly um destroyed the argument from perfect preservation and the argument from scientific miracles which the entire time i've been dealing with islam have been the two main arguments for Islam. these guys i didn't destroy it i tried i tried exposing the stuff i mean we we did and that's the reason these guys eventually had to admit some things but they're the ones who pushed everything over the finish line and said yep these arguments are garbage and now they're stuck with uh, uh we're gonna sh we're gonna convert people because of our amazing intolerance and if we can get on enough podcasts with a bunch of with enough hosts who don't know anything about Islam, we'll spread deception faster than people can uncover it, especially if we can make them not have any critics of Islam on their show as well. And they're getting desperate. And it's just it's just going to be hilarious to watch all this come crumble into the ground. Inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I wanted to bring up that clip quickly of him saying that that uh, yes, Islam is intolerant and we're proud of that or something like that. But yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, Kevin Blackwell said, "Hey Robert, why do you no longer serve as a deacon, and what's the name of the priest you served under?" 
There's one thing that you guys are never going to ever get me to do, and that is reveal anything remotely connected to my life. Yeah. Hey, never Robert, yo, what church do you go to, Robert? And what's the address? And <laughs> hey, I want to come over one day, Robert. What's, hey, Robert, uh, what's, what's the address at? of your home? Hey, yeah. hey yes, Robert, exactly. Which, which one is it? <laughs> so that, they, they keep trying. It's never going to happen. Yeah. It's nice. Hey, Robert, what grocery store do you go to? <laughs> hey, you know, that's a that's an interesting story because I actually got a death threat once. A uh, guy said, just I once? saw you. Just uh, once? You no, got like I, five. To, you got like five today. Yeah. Yeah. I've gotten <laughs> thousands. Anyway, the guy says, uh, I saw you in the supermarket today. And so next time I'm, I, I followed you home and now I know where you live. And so next time I, you come out, I'm going to kill you. And so... Uh, I, I I I I read this, and I went out and I told a friend about it, who responded, "Oh come on, when were you last in the supermarket?" Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I've got was, ones like that, that where uh, that. where <laughs> where a guy says uh, a guy says, uh, uh, "Hey David, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I know where you live. I've got pictures. Uh, I've got pictures of your kids when they're outside. Uh, just so you know, um, it's sad that they're going to have to die because of what you did." And I responded, "Wait, you're hiding in the bushing? You're hiding in the bushes taking pictures of kids? Yeah, good, good impact <laughs> your, your profit has had on you, you freaking pervert." Anyway. <laughs> You know, there was an instance where Mohammed was uh, actually hiding in the bushes and uh, and and watching this little little kid uh, Ibn Sayyad because uh, he he suspected that he is the Dajjal because he was disrespectful to to Mohammed and he actually went into the bushes and he was he went into the into into the not the bushes but he went into into the into the into the yard and was hiding and 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 and, and listening and seeing if he's going to do anything suspicious anything supernatural if he's going to do magic or something that's what Mohammed was. Uh, doing he was suspecting little children of being the dajjal and now we have these guys i love this hadith uh the prophet went out in the heat of the day he did not speak to me this is abu Huraira. nor did i speak to him until he came to the market of kainuka he sat in the courtyard of fatima's house and asked is the little one here is the little one here <laughs> fatima held her son back for a short time i think she was putting a necklace on him or washing him then he came running and Muhammad hugged him and kissed him. He said, "Oh Allah, love him and love those who love him." Mm -hmm. I've got, oh, yeah. I've got an even, I've got an even more powerful one, Robert. This is uh, Sunan Abu Dawud two hundred three. The Messenger of Allah said, "The eyes are the leather strap of the owner." <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, that that'd be an awesome. You could have an entire roundtable discussion on that. Say, hey, Muhammad said the eyes are the leather strap of the anus, so yeah. one who sleeps should perform ablution. Let's, 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 let's do a whole discussion. show. Let's do a whole show discussing whole the show. Wisdom of there them. needs to be a debate <laughs> where you know Daniel Hakikachu says yes, the eyes are the leather strap yeah, of the yeah, anus. That's the topic. And, and, are the eyes the leather <laughs> strap of the anus? No, no, they are not. <laughs> Heated debate. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, I'm ready when you are. We'll talk about it Thursday. He did hey, today. and Daniel will be like, uh, I've consulted seven studies <laughs> that all show where psychologists and medical doctors have confirmed that the eyes are indeed oh. the leather strap of the anus. And uh, I only looked at the abstracts, but uh it was in there. <laughs> And, and to prove this, I went to Google Scholar. I typed in eyes, leather strap, anus, and seven articles came up. So I know it's in there uh, <laughs> that this has all been proven. Wow. Dawa, this is Dawa, ladies and gentlemen. We're, act we're actually in the 21st century having uh, these discussions. And these are, these are the guys we're dealing with. <laughs> I could go on. Talking about what you're ascribing to it. Simple as that. So that's why I'll repeat it one more time for my fans, those Islamic folks. The scientific argument, the scientific miracles in the Quran is debunked. And we as Muslims, Powerful. guess what? It doesn't bother us to the least. You know why? Because Alhamdulillah, you know what's very interesting? People are flocking to Islam. Isn't that crazy? Oh, you Murtads, you ex-Muslims. Yeah. Oh, you hostile Christians, Islamophobes, not all of you. Zionists. Some of you are Jews. Some of you Hindus. Robert all of you guys. 
and tails between your legs, walking away. And you know what's interesting? Not bother us. Pakistan because of his intolerance. <laughs> what happened to you know me? So saying, what, uh, he, he's just talking about one person here. He's talking about Andrew Tate, and because Andrew Tate converted to Islam after having some shady dealings with uh, some powerful people in the Middle East, uh, because he talked about how Islam is great because it's, it's so intolerant and violent. He's now saying, "Look, people are flocking to Islam, flocking to Islam left and right because of its intolerance." You're just looking at that one one guy, the pimp, uh, who, and and, and that's your that, yeah. that's your standard. That's the new model. That's the new model for <laughs> for all of Dawa. For all of Dawa, and he's sitting here. My goodness. Yeah. Did you do, notice, and do you uh... know? And do you know why people are flocking to Islam? Because of me pot of gold. Because of <laughs> because of the green clovers, the blue stars, the moons. <laughs> me forced the lucky charms. There's over there, and people is flocking for these lucky charms. Did yeah. You know and we're proud of that. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice at the at the beginning of the video with Eddie that uh oh man I am getting old. Whoa. Sorry, go on. I'll think of it in a minute. Okay. Something from the beginning of the video with Eddie. Yeah. Something happened. Something lots of lots of things happened. Let's see what, what the, in that and we are proud of that. And I'll repeat it again. Yes? We are proud of that. Yes, you didn't. You didn't say it right. It's like we're proud of that. Yeah, he's trying to change his voice because yeah, say we're it proud right. of that. Say it right. Say it right, Ali. I'm talking about. And how we're proud that? of that. There is that capital punishment. We are proud of oh, that. Yeah. We love I remember it. this. Hey, Muhammad, it, Muhammad right. Hijab makes a reference at the beginning of the video with Eddie to all his girlfriends, oh. and Eddie looks embarrassed and says, "You mean all your wives?" And he says, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean." Yeah, but I uh, thought, wait a minute, that's not that's not halal. Mm. Yeah, he, he said um, there was a very uh, right at cute, the beginning cute moment where he says, "Probably I like right your there." Smile. Yeah, I love you. I, I love your smile, brother. Good one. That's what all the girls say. That's what that's what all the uh, your all your wives say, huh? <laughs> that's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> This, this is this is very this is very odd yeah you very just, awkward he, laughter there from Eddie yeah just he, he look at the like camera Haram talk his look at the camera like uh oh that's this that's not supposed that's to what he gonna say <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what that's what all the uh your all your wives say huh <laughs> that's right yeah that's not supposed to happen you're not yes. supposed to make that joke <laughs> man but yeah, all the girls like Muhammad Hijab because he likes talking about golden showers and likes talking about uh, people having sex with each other on stream upon his orders and dressing up in uh, weird fetish outfits. You seen those? You seen yeah. those? Tw you seen those tweets where he like asks girls, asks Muslim girls <laughs> okay. how how often they have sex and stuff like I, that? On I had that up earlier. Yeah, he wow. actually did did do that. Powerful, powerful dollar. <laughs> He said, if you are a Muslim woman uh, how, and you are married, how many times do you have sex per week? He, he asked. Actually. No, no. <laughs> no, tell me in my DMs. Describe <laughs> it in more detail. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> I had that up earlier. I saw somebody bring that up because um, somebody was saying um, uh, Muslims are... Muslims are strong and potent or something like that. And somebody somebody brought up that tweet. I don't know. Uh, I should look at that. Um, anyway, I was going to mention something quickly before we forget that. Must have been really important. Very, very important. We're all getting old tonight. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> I don't remember what kind of, what that was. I don't know. Anyway, you see, Allah has cursed your memories. You're both forgetting everything. You're finished already. Look at me. Look at it's me. Like, you are the dumb. It's like, it's like Muhammad and his companions forgetting all these verses of the Quran. You see, he has abrogated your arguments. Ha -ha. I had something to say, but it goaded it. <laughs> I had something to say, but the only people who had it memorized died in battle. Oh, yeah. All haram. Than uh, what's your favorite color? If it detaches us from the entailments of those things, tail. 
What does he uh, entail? He's got quite the Entails aura. Penetra- uh, anal penetration from man to man. Uh, a painful uh, anal penetration. Okay, and uh, <laughs> what is this? This this is a this is a a secret video which he published what? and then and then later deleted. What's missing? Hit? What's missing? The you eyes. Are... <laughs> the eyes are the leather strap of the anus. It's you like have your the... eyes. And you have you the leather me. strap to guard yourself against <laughs> this. <laughs> yes, what did it uh, into a, a knee jerk reaction? You see, this really does expose what is the your favorite color with the very moralities. That they claim to believe. This is a very interesting video. Like in, in this video, he is basically. Um, this is the video that he published immediately the next day after he he came into our live chat and started talking about golden showers and this and that. He uh, next day he recorded this video and published it on his on his channel, where he talks about why he did that and why he told me to commit suicide and why he uh, made wh- why he talked about my 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 mother and my sister and. Uh, in, in terms of that I should be in an incestuous relationship with them uh, and all of these things. And that there was actually, it was not impulsive. There was uh, a, a plan, a, a great genius plan behind all of that. I'm an architect of bridges. He, he made this video and then he deleted this video a little bit after award. He, ah, he deleted coward. it. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> if that was the plan all along, like why did you delete this video? It's, it's very, yeah. very strange, right? <laughs> Anyway, well, these are the winners who are going to be on the uh, PBD podcast. For the representatives of Islam, Alhamdulillah, Islam's future is bright. And and ever and, and and people are wondering, oh, why don't these guys want to be on there with people who are going to point all this stuff out? Nobody knows. Slavic Chile said, uh, Sosnik is a secular Jew, center-left, socially liberal. Haven't seen him discuss theology on the twenty-plus shows that I've seen. May not be knowledgeable. We will not know. I don't know. I I guess. I won't know till Thursday how exactly this show is going to work. Uh, contrary to what Muhammad Hijab said, I had no input. And so I, think, I, I don't think know Sosnick if Sosnick's is, going to be involved or not. I think Sosnick is, is a co-host. Uh, he is a host of that, that, that one show that they are having together, which is um, what's it, what's the, whatever that show's name is. Um, but they are co-hosts, so he's supposed to be there by default. I guess that's how I, how far I, I understand it. I don't know if anyone wants to clarify or correct me on that in the chat. Let me know. I don't know much about those shows. John H. said, what is this? The best of Dawa Rat Pack? Yes. Yes. Is, are, is the Rat Pack them or us? That's what I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> you know, the Rat Pack... It, w- it was uh, Frank Sinatra and yeah, that w- those guys uh, were Dean cool. Martin. Yeah, Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> is, yeah. is it is it them though, or is it us? I don't. Maybe it's so it's, they, it's I, them I because they're got to be us. But it's Dawa, so you know. Yeah, I guess it's them. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's them. It's just a comp. So I, I'm not. I'm not taking this as a compliment. We're it's the anti Dawa rep. Yeah, 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 yeah. We are the bad guys. Uh, Royal Castrilla said, Momo Hijab is a closeted uh, pirate moon. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. And Thank what's you. what's crazy is like, hey, we don't want to, we, we, we don't want to talk about that stuff. But I mean, this is the golden showers, golden showers. Get on your knees, Gimpa. Ha ha. This is how you, I got to slap them. I got to slap them during the golden showers. Like, what is this dude into? Bring him young. Bring... <laughs> that always cracks me up. Bring him young. <laughs> 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 bring him bring him young peace be upon him <laughs> sad, uh, yes sad uh <laughs> Yeah, uh, said, "Hey, David, in the apostate uh, product, go easy on Richard. What, what what is happening here? What are you doing? <laughs> you started it, AP, by calling me. <laughs> but why am I suddenly apostate product? What is this? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because you're only, only you're only in it to make money off Muslim, yeah. off Islamophobia. <laughs> I'm the only exactly. one who got named correctly. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. People respect you too much. Mm-hmm. Nobody has any respect for for Robert or me." His so, new so, monia turned into old monia. That's true. Yeah. It's been so. It's been going on for so long. That's <laughs> true. Bring them. You're right. <laughs> uh, Samuel Robinson said, "David, do you plan on writing a book? I would love to add you to my bookshelf. Maybe he wants to add you to his bookshelf, not a book. Yeah, not a book. You. Yeah. 
You... I've already uh, I've already written one and a half. Uh, back when I submitted one back in the day, I was told, "Hey, who it's are you? You're, hey, who are you? You're a YouTuber." <laughs> <laughs> and then a couple of years later, all the publishers started finding out about uh, that YouTubers are popular and can uh, market their own books and stuff. And then everyone started messaging me, hey, 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 all the like actual companies saying, hey, we want you to write a book and stuff. And I was like, no, you guys had your chance. But yeah, I'll uh, I mean, I've already I've already got one. So, so yeah, I can uh, I've never resubmitted it after they said you're you're a YouTuber, basically. But uh, yeah, no, I'll submit something here or there. Yeah, something. I don't know. I feel like there's. I feel like there's... there's... There's a deeper, there's a deeper, more sinister message here. This guy is saying he wants to, he wants to kidnap wants David to, Wood. Because David Wood, so yeah. I'm going to turn you into a bookshelf. Because I'm, I'm going to turn you Wood. into my bookshelf. I'll make a bookshelf out of David. Uh, <laughs> Ramirez said, as a non, as a non in a Muslim majority, what as a non-Muslim, a Muslim majority yeah. secular Malaysia, I was kind of scared learning from a recent survey that 82% of Muslim youth want Quran to replace the constitution what do you expect well what could go wrong i mean it works out so well that's why uh that's why uh sharia works so well and everyone wants to move to muslim countries because it's so yeah, great that's why pakistan has such an illegal immigration problem mm -hmm. yeah everyone wants to move there that mm -hmm. in afghanistan i can't wait to go oh yeah um, i like i like really i mean like i'm so desperate to get to afghanistan i'll like hang on to the side of a plane uh to get there <laughs> it's so great <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Radical moderate said, D Wood, were there any woke protesters protesting racist Kenny at the debate? Have you seen the video? Yeah, I've seen the video. What video are we talking about here? It would have been easy to bring up, but there's a <laughs> video that was that was like the day, but I think it was a day or two before. Um, it was a day or two before I did the debate. If I were slimy, I could have brought it up. But uh, it's Kenny. He's in, I think, a deli. And it's not clear, but he was saying some disrespectful words towards the woman uh, who was, uh, I don't know, making a sandwich or something like this. And a, uh, a young uh, young black guy there said, uh, hey, you shouldn't be talking to women like that. Um, so, hey, quit being disrespectful towards women. And Kenny turned and said, I will take my belt off and whip you, boy, or something like that. I'll, I'll take my belt what? off and whip you. Not the boy. I don't think he said boy. But uh, I'll take my belt off and whip you. Said that to a black man, so everyone's calling him. Everyone's calling him racist, Kenny. Now, is that on YouTube? Yeah, it's on. It's on Twitter. Just people now. Every now, everything he tweets, they they post that. They share that video in response. He didn't realize there was a guy behind him standing there because he had started insulting the woman. A guy started recording right then when this guy tried to correct him. But the guy actually, the guy who was standing behind him and started recording has a huge TikTok channel and posted it. Oh, so everyone whoops. started sharing it. But yeah, with that said, I don't know. I don't know. Kenny was nice to me when we were there. So I didn't want to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to use that in, for debate purposes, but yeah, there's some problems there. <clears throat> Hoopsie. Uh, go on and say a few things and I'll, I'll look for that. Uh, Rublar said, not inshallah, smash Allah, peace be behind the prophet. That's very disrespectful. Okay. That's disgusting. So, yeah. It's Islam. It sounds, like, it sounds like something Muhammad Ajab would say. <laughs> yeah. Uh Tenzil Muslimhood made a super chat. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Royal Castrilla said the Dihya Al Kalbi and Muhammad used to spend nights together reciting Surah 69. <laughs> for, for for those who don't know, Dihya Al Kalbi, that, that means uh Dihya the dog. Uh -huh. Possibly because he like I don't even want to say it's possibly because he liked doggy style, but I mean come on, why else they call him the dog? Anyway, um yeah, so apparently this dude looked exactly like the angel Gabriel because uh, when Diha would uh, be walking out of Muhammad's house and, hey, who's that? And he goes, no, that was the angel Gabriel. <laughs> I was like, really? That was who, that was, who was leaving? <laughs> is this what we were talking about? Uh, wait a minute. Let me put this up here. Yep, is there it is. Movie? That's the guy. That's the guy. That's Yeah, he's uh, – I don't know who he is, but he's got some TikTok channel or something like that because it had a ton of views on it. Okay, let's see. So this man, a black man, speaks up and says, hey, don't talk to them that way. And then that guy takes issue with it. And fortunately, someone else waiting there starts recording. Oh, this guy didn't do it. I thought this guy was doing it. Oh, That's Kenny Bomber there. <laughs> Take 
take my belt off and whip you. Oh. What belt? He's got belt on those shorts. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What in the world? Um, all those who, who say I uh, can't hear, you're not the only ones. There's too much background noise in the video. So it's, it's very hard to make out what they're saying. That's but, why they uh, put word. That's why they put words on the. Yeah. That's but, why they put, uh, yeah. You can tell that's that's what's being said if you listen, but yeah. So, yeah. so that's what he clearly. Yeah, and then he goes, and then the rest of it is him explaining who uh, Kenny Bomer is. Kenny looks like he took style tips from John Fetterman. What in the world, man? This is... <laughs> I mean, who who reacts like this to somebody just saying, don't talk to a woman like that? Yeah, don't disrespect a woman like that. Wow. Representatives of Islam are really, really, really interesting folks. Nowadays, as always. Um, yeah. What can you say? In Kenny's defense, he did not run from uh, the debates we've had, unlike some people. That's so messed up. Uh, Addison Weir said, there seems to be a good amount of vulgarity spoken by Muslims like Muhammad Hijab. Any idea why? Imitating Muhammad. Yeah. Yeah, Muhammad, the, Muhammad the said... The uh, quotes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Muhammad said, Muhammad said, uh, if anyone brags about his, his lineage, uh, tell him to go bite his father's penis and don't use a euphemism. You got Abu Bakr, go suck a lot's, uh, a lot's clitoris and stuff like that. It's just, it's just built in there. Bite your dad's penis. That's what he said. That's what the Prophet Muhammad said in a very respectful and wise, uh, way. Uh, yeah, and, and, and notice, I mean, go perform, <laughs> go suck a lot's clitoris. That's yeah. Abu Bakr, uh, who was the first of the rightly guided caliphs. He said that in the presence of Muhammad. But notice, as soon as you started, if you were to talk like that about, hey, hey go give, hey, go give Allah a BJ, why don't you? They would, oh, we're, oh, we're victims, oh, it's love of us. oh, what are we going to do? Oh, you see, you can't listen to these guys anymore. It's like, wait, that's like the, the champions of your, the, the heroes of your religion talk like that. And notice, even that, that that way of talking is way better than going out and slaughtering people in the name of Allah and killing apostates and raping little girls and stuff. It's like, that's the least of our concerns is your horrible, disgusting, revolting language. But this is just so funny. Like, uh, Muslims will often represent Muhammad as, uh, or present Muhammad as this, this guy who was like, who's like very, very, you know, very good, so humble. very humble, full of wisdom and quiet and shy and this and that. And he just had your only, penis. only good things to say. And he's like, if somebody says this, tell them to go and eat their father's penis like okay well that's how bite your father's it. penis <laughs> suck suck your goddesses clitoris <laughs> and we're proud of that <laughs> the eyes are the leather strap of the anus like, <laughs> this is it's important yeah look look at here look at Muhammad. oh can i suck your wife's tick to make her mom <laughs> this is how this is how these guys these are the champions of their religion <laughs> Oh wow! Well, um, and then uh, they, they don't talk politely back to us. How dare they? Can't can't talk to them. How like, dare they? What a joke! How what a absolute they? joke here! How dare they? Um, by the way, it's very funny. After some wild comments, he he tweeted this at one point. He said, "Recently, I had a serious back injury and have been on a mix of extremely Oopsie. potent medications. This mixed with my <laughs> wild nature has produced some very unusual private Oopsie. and public communications. This is one of them. Apologies once again. Oopsie. <laughs> this is his excuse. <laughs> <laughs> I said I said all of these very messed up weird things because you know, I was taking medication for my pain and you know like that made me say all of these messed up things. Listen, Isn't man, that... I had a back injury. That's why I did all that cocaine. <laughs> I Isn't took that all that an cocaine intoxicating I... liquor? <laughs> I, Isn't, took all the... I took Isn't... all the cocaine. If 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 the if the pain meds make him drunk, isn't that for isn't that forbidden? It's it's you know you you can't drink alcohol. The the I, issue is I, also that lots of people take the same medication and it's it's like like it, that's not a regular thing that just happens that you just become yeah, completely too. Can I suck your life. wife's tit? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> but I took heavy medication like that or of the same kind before for for pain and I, and I never I never became wild. It was like, hey, let me suck your wife's tits. <laughs> <laughs> I took some oxycontin. I want to suck your wife's tits. What's the problem? <laughs> Anyway, uh, and, <laughs> and what's I mean, what what's crazy there is he's mocking what Muhammad said, right? There are people who are defending <laughs> Muhammad's teaching that, hey, if you have to if a woman has to be around a, a, a grown man and you're not going to be around to keep an eye on them and make sure they don't uh, commit adultery or something like that, you have the woman breastfeed the man a bunch of times. So he sucks on her, you know, he sucks on her breasts 10 times. And then, then you don't have to worry about them uh, being sexually uh, active with each other. Because uh, And Aisha you know, says that was originally in the Quran. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. There were two versions of it in the Quran. And then, uh, oopsie, got uh, eaten, by a, eaten by a sheep or, or goat. Uh, yeah, she just didn't want to, died. She didn't want to have to put up with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, Jensen uh, said, hey, what? Go ahead. Yeah, uh, actually, it's about this, so go ahead. Uh, AP, you should interview Marine Van Putin and Sean Anthony. Um, quickly, I want to say I respect both of those for what they do for their academic work. Um, uh, Marine Van Putin is he doesn't like interacting with people who are polemicists. Yeah, can I uh, can I tell a story about how I have no respect for Marine Van Putin, or do you not go ahead, want to go ahead, that? Go ahead, go ahead. No. Okay, uh, I put out the critical Quran last year. Shame it's a trans you. new translation of the Quran with commentary. It's the first uh, Quran widely published in English that has variant readings listed, all kinds of things. And anyway, on Twitter, I was talking about it, trying to uh, get people interested in the book, of course. And I said in one of the tweets that uh, Allah prays for Muhammad. It's in the Quran, 33 Chapter 33, verse 36. Uh, or is it 56? I'm having trouble with the numbers which one? tonight. It's uh, which 3356. One it? Sorry. The uh, Allah prays for Muhammad. Yeah, yeah. That's 3356. So 3356, Allah prays for Muhammad. So who's he praying to? And we're the only translation. I got the only translation here that tells the truth about this verse. Mm -hmm. And so, because all the other, most of the other translations in English, they cover this up. And so everybody went crazy, and all these uh, people on Twitter were saying, oh, you're a liar, it doesn't say that, and you're stupid, and you're ignorant, and you have no nothing. And so people were asking Marine Van Putin about it. And he actually tweeted, yeah, he's right, actually. That's what it says. He does say that. Yeah. And I was, I was impressed, and I thought, wow, that's great that he admitted that. And I was in the middle of something else. So... I uh, uh, thought, isn't that nice that he said that? And I went back and went to went back on working on what I was doing. A few hours later, I went back to find it because I wanted to screenshot it and use it later. And he had deleted it. Mm. And couldn't handle the blowback. Explained. Yeah, he explained actually that he de he openly said that he deleted it because he didn't want to identify with an Islamophobe, you know, and didn't yeah. want to validate that what, what I was saying was true. And so the guy is a total coward and he's not even honest about something when, I mean, he admitted it yeah. Yeah. and then he wouldn't stick by it because he's afraid of what kind of blow blowback he would get. Yep. Uh -oh. So uh, if you talk to him, I hope you ask him about that uh -oh. uh, or have, have me on I, with him. I think he would never. He would never agree to no, talk to me. Never agree to he that. has a. Yeah, he would never agree to talk to me either. He is. Yeah. Um, he is. He is easy to just um, tell you very openly and clearly that he that you got something wrong completely. Um, but sometimes I don't know. It, it gets a little bit weird. I had a, I had a back and forth with him about uh, the name of Allah, and um, it. I don't. I don't exactly remember the, how the discussion was going, but I was basically talking to somebody about how um, how in Islam Allah is 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 the proper proper name of of the God of Allah, which is not the the fact uh, which is not the same in, in Abrahamic religion, mm -hmm. and how this differs and, and all of that. And um, I don't know. We got into a we got into quite a lengthy back and forth with him, but um, overall he has been quite fair. To me, he has also been mm -hmm. has also answered questions when I uh, asked him something when I had some discussions with him. Um, I think he mostly tries to be quite unbiased and honest in his 
in his views. Although at, at some points I may have noticed some things that I didn't. Well, he's really, an academic. Didn't and really so like, academics you know? <laughs> have to, the academic establishment is completely sold out to Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and other big donors. Mm -hmm. And so he has to say everything to toe the line with them. And that's why he couldn't admit that I was right. Yeah, and yeah. So that's just that's just cowardly. I have no respect for this man. That is what we can all agree on is that according to the Quran, Allah prays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sean Anthony, on the other hand, I have um I think he's he's more okay with people who uh criticize. Okay, uh one thing I wanted to say about Marine from Putin is um when he was asked uh if he would have a conversation with Mohammed Hijab or, or me or others, he said uh, he doesn't want to have a conversation with anybody who is a polemicist, who is uh who is engaging in polemics only with people who just want to, you know, to discuss and, and all of that. He just doesn't want to engage with polemicists because of uh, reputation issues. Because uh, it, it would jeopardize his academic position. I'm laughing yeah. because I, I have no idea who this guy is. So when when AP was saying, uh, this, yeah, he says he doesn't want to uh, interact with anyone. I was like, hey, that's like me. I don't want it either. And then he's like, oh, anyone <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but then you kept going after the anyone. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah I don't like him anymore. Um, oh, that, that's that's funny. I'm just looking through his channel to see if he's why are we about... spending seven hours talking about Majin Van Putin? So wait, because he oh, said, I just have a story, it's over he said, now. Uh, he said, let no, me AP's clear. trying to keep it going. Now we're going to go through his entire now, Hold on, he's talking about you here. Wait a minute. Let me be clear that I would feel very yeah. uncomfortable coming in a channel that interviewed David Wood, too. That's oh, what wow. he's <laughs> I'm just looking through tweets to see if he said anything about you and me. Uh, and, and I just found these two things here. Let me let me this one here. Oh. Um, so he might not have much respect for you, David, just so you know, in advance. Um, he said... Oh, yeah, I thought you were joking. No, I'm serious. He was taught. Apparently, he said about Daniel Kikichu. What did he say about me, David? He what said is about a Daniel Kikichu that he's a disgusting shit bigot. And then they were like, "Why did you call him that?" And you would never say that about the Islam. Disgusting. Then he said, "I called him a bigot who said disgusting shit." David Wood is a bigot who says disgusting shit too. I don't follow Posse Prophet well enough to know. That's what he said. Okay, so. Oh no! <laughs> this guy I never heard of is saying this. <laughs> he's yeah. a he's a scholar of the Quran. And he's generally honest about what the Quran says, but he's so complimentary toward Orthodox Islam that all the Muslims on Twitter think that he's their hero and their champion, and he will clear it all up for them. And he's honest, residually honest enough to admit when I was right, but then he got scared and took it down. That's pretty... And that's pretty pretty bad. That's pretty. Yeah. That's, that's a pretty bad look. He is uh, one of the people who is uh, who who did say or who did tell Muslims on Twitter that there is basically no way of verifying whether the Quran is, uh, you know, it, it is exactly the way that Muhammad, um, you know, revealed it, and that it is also completely unacademic and implausible and irrelevant to him whether the Quran can be described as better than anything else or miraculous or not and that this is just a a futile discussion that is that is only an agenda behind it so uh, I, I I find it interesting and respectable that the guy mm -hmm. says such things to calm down all those <laughs> Muslim fans that's at least good uh anyway briefly through sean anthony uh he said he would have a discussion with me on a neutral platform but he also as it as an orientalist i guess he wants to protect other orientalists from <laughs> getting a bad reputation he would probably hate that word yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's asianist ap yes. <laughs> gotta be politically correct yeah. let's just call it let's, let's call it islamists okay uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, to make things worse. Uh, all right, that's that's all I have for today. Uh, anything else you guys want to add? Nope. Just uh, stay away from something. I forget what. <laughs> Islam. I, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Here we go. Watch Patrick bet David on Thursday. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone. Uh, yeah, we'll all we'll all be we'll all be sharing that. There's still a part of me that thinks that that they will whine. Not not Hakikachu. He sounds like he's willing, but uh, some of the other you know guys might try to derail it by whining ahead of time. But uh, hopefully, if they haven't canceled it by now, hopefully they don't. 
We'll see. <clears throat> yeah, we'll so see. Uh, Robert yeah, Spencer will be having a discussion on the PBD channel, uh, I guess, live with Daniel Kikichu and that Dean Show dude and uh, and Brother Rashid. It will be hopefully very, very fruitful and interesting. And it will be uh, bridges will be built that day. Uh, I'm very happy and I anticipate it with great excitement. Um, <laughs> and uh thanks everybody for watching i will link robert spencer's channel down in the description and also tag him here so that you can uh visit him uh this time i will not charge any money for that uh and... i already have the check written <laughs> and and david uh David, he has a channel too for those who don't who don't know who david wood is uh you can go and visit his channel as well and until next time I will leave you alone with a message from a wonderful guy who likes to jump in here and tell you the last word, as always. Stay away from Islam.